In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to design decks for your Stream Deck devices inside Soundflow. If you haven't already watched our video on how to set up Soundflow with Stream Deck, please check the link in the description and make sure to watch that first. In that video, I also talk about why we recommend that you design your decks inside Soundflow, as there are many benefits to doing this. The first thing we're going to do is to look at how to install a package made by another user and how to get Soundflow to display the installed deck on your Stream Deck device. First, let's go to the store and find the popular dialog editing isotope package that we've created. To install it, just click Install. Now, to go to the installed package, just click on Go to Package. You'll see that you can also find the package by looking inside the Install Packages folder over here. Now, if we look through the contents of this package, we can see there's a deck here. You can locate a deck by the icon with the nine small dots. And this deck is called Isotope RX deck. Let's click on it to see what it contains. Now you can see the deck here with all the colorful icons we've designed. If you click Show Deck, the deck should now show up on one of your connected Stream Deck devices. And if you have Isotope RX open, you can now use the buttons on your Stream Deck to control the Isotope RX modules. Now, this deck was only shown because I manually clicked on the Show Deck button. What if I want this deck to be shown automatically every time Isotope RX becomes the focused app? To set this up, we need to add a trigger to the deck. A trigger in Soundflow is what defines when a command should be run. For example, when to run a script, or in this case, when to show a deck. So to add a trigger, first click the New Trigger button. In order to show the deck each time an application gets activated, we need to select an application trigger. For the application, select Isotope RX Audio Editor and make sure to choose Activate as the event. And that's it. The trigger is already stored, so we can now click anywhere to close the window. And our deck now will be shown every time Isotope RX becomes the focused app. So what if you like the deck, but you want to make a few changes to it? Maybe you want it to be shown on a different Stream Deck device, or you want to edit or swap some buttons. If you try to make changes to the deck now, you'll see that it's not possible. That's because when you install a deck or macro from somebody else, it's read-only. In fact, all decks, macros, and scripts that you install from other users are read-only. We do this so that when you want to update to a newer version of a package later, it won't create a conflict with any changes you would have made in your own version. So, in other words, in order to edit a deck that was made by somebody else, we first need to make an editable copy of that deck. To do that, click on Make Editable Copy. And now you have to choose a package that you want to place your copy in. Packages are the folder-like structures that you select in the left side of Soundflow. You can create your own packages as a way to organize your scripts and decks by first clicking New and choose Package. For now, I'm just going to select my default package for this copy to be stored in. Now that I have an editable copy of the deck, I can go ahead and for example move two buttons around, or change the stream deck I want it to be shown on. I'll walk you through how to add new buttons a little later in this tutorial. If I'm happy with the changes I've made to my copy of the deck, I have to make sure to create a new trigger for this new deck, and remove the old trigger on the old deck, so that Soundflow knows that it's my new version of the deck I want to be shown when Isotope RX gets focused. So until now, we've looked at how to use decks designed by other users. Let's take a look at how you can create your own deck from scratch. To create a new deck, first select the package that you want to create your deck in. Then click the New button and choose Deck. Let's give it a name, for example, Pro Tools Deck. Now you can see the deck details in the bottom right quadrant of the screen. In the Device dropdown, I can choose which device this deck should be shown on by default. And in the size dropdown, I can choose if I want this deck to fit with a regular Stream Deck with 15 buttons or a Stream Deck XL with 32 buttons. Let's design a 5x3 deck for now. Now let's add a button to our Stream Deck. First, click the button to bring it up. You can see that the selected button lights up with a blue border. In this first example, let's give it a title. I'm going to call this one Preview. Next, we need to select which Soundflow command to run when the user presses the button. To do that, click on the command field here. In this pop-up, you'll see a searchable list of all Soundflow commands in your account, both the built-in commands, 
the install scripts and macros, and all of your own scripts and macros. Let's search for preview and select the built-in toggle preview command. Now to check that this works, click show deck to show this on the default device we selected earlier. And as we can see, I can now click our new preview button to toggle the preview state in Pro Tools. Now let's see how we can add an icon to our button instead of the black and white title. For the icon, I want to use a screenshot of the preview button. Let's use the built-in macOS shortcut for copying screenshots to the clipboard. On your keyboard, click Ctrl Shift Command 4 and drag around the preview button. Now back in Soundflow, click on the icon field and choose Paste from Clipboard. Finally, remove the title we added earlier so the icon stands alone and we're done. So what if we want to do something that isn't a built-in Soundflow action, but instead our own macro? The important thing to remember here is that this involves two steps in Soundflow. First, we need to create the macro, and then we can assign that macro to a button on our deck. A common thing people want to do with the Stream Deck button is to use it to open an application. So let's use that as an example. Our first step is to create the macro. Make sure we've selected the right package first, then click New and choose Macro, and let's call this Open Pro Tools. Now we can edit the actions that this macro should take in the bottom right quadrant here. Click Add Action to bring up a list of all the possible actions we can add. We can now either navigate the action folders in the left side, or just start typing to search. Let's choose the Launch Application action and click Enter. Next, we have to tell the action which application we want it to launch. To do that, click on the Path field and type Pro Tools. And that's it. Now we can test our macro by clicking Run Macro, and we can see that it activates Pro Tools. Now, since this is a regular macro, we could now add a keyboard trigger to it if we want it. But since we want to add this to our deck, we don't need to add any triggers now. To connect our new macro to a deck button, we need to do that inside the deck. But before we do that, let's make sure to give our macro a proper icon. To get the Pro Tools icon, go to your Applications folder and find Pro Tools, then click Command-I to bring up the info window. Now click the little icon in the top left corner and press Command-C. Go back to Soundflow, and now in the empty square next to the macro title, click and choose Set Icon from Clipboard. Now our macro is done. Let's go back to our deck and add it to a button. Let's select a button here and then click on the command dropdown. I'll search for our macro named Open Pro Tools and select it. And that's it. Now since we added the icon to the macro itself, instead of just to the button, this icon automatically is shown on any deck where the macro is added to. So now you've learned how to install packages from other users, how to add application triggers to your decks, how to make editable copies of installed decks, how to design your own decks, how to create macros that launch applications, and finally, how to reuse icons across macros. I hope this gives you a good start on how to design decks in Soundflow. And always remember, if you have a question or get stuck somehow, ask a question on our forum and we'll help you get it working.